Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the energy balance models. So the general energy balance is similar to the general mass balance in that we have accumulation is equal to the enthalpy in minus enthalpy out plus or minus generation plus or minus transfer and plus or minus the work. So we have an additional term here and we have our generation and transfer. Now the enthalpy acts similar to the inflow and the outflow because we'll have an enthalpy value coming in and we'll also have an enthalpy value coming out. Now for most chemical processes, the accumulation term is the energy balance can be expressed in terms of temperature, enthalpy force, or the internal energy. Now these are all rates of change, so it's essentially the rate of change of enthalpy with respect to time, temperature with respect to time, and also the internal energy with respect to time. Because what we are essentially saying here is we want to know the change from the beginning of the the system, so say for example a reactor, we want to know the situation at the start and then the situation at the end and that would be with respect to time because everything is going to change as time passes. Now in this video we're only going to consider the temperature and enthalpy uh, system but in our course we will look at the other types of systems as well. Now the term enthalpy here simply refers to the energy in the flow. So it's often denoted by delta H, delta capital H, or sometimes lowercase h. Um, but it just depends on your reference source. Now a batch system doesn't have an inflow and an outflow, and as such both the terms wouldn't exist. Because just like the mass balance for a batch system, then we didn't have any inflow and we didn't have any outflow. Now it's important to consider the state of the streams and to account for the phase change. Because if we refer to the, the steam table for example, if we look at the enthalpy for liquid water and then compare it to the enthalpy for vapour at the same temperature and the same pressure, we will see a significant difference in the values. So the enthalpy change here in a batch system is caused by the change in the phase. So usually going from a liquid to a vapour or a vapour to a liquid. Now a change in the vapour phase would require condensation of the heat of vaporization and a change from solid state to a liquid state would have the condensation of the heating melting. So just like in terms of ice, if we had solid ice and we wanted to go to a liquid then we would have the consideration of the heat of melting rather than the heat of vaporization. Now when mixing of different fluids takes place, then the heat of the mixing must be considered as well because ultimately when we combine a couple of chemicals in a reaction, it will either be an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. Now this has to be considered when we discuss the value of enthalpy. Now the generation term exists when there is reactions within the system, so that's where we account for this um, generation or consumption of energy due to the reaction itself. So that's why we have plus and minus the generation because the plus would refer to energy that is generated and the negative would refer to the energy that is consumed. Now the transfer term becomes important when the system is not adiabatic. Now adiabatic means that it's not insulated from the surroundings. So therefore we can have heat transfer taking place from the system to the surroundings and vice versa. And there is a significant difference in the temperature between the system and the surroundings then we couldn't assume uh, adiabatic conditions. If there was a very subtle difference maybe plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius, we could assume adiabatic conditions. But if the temperature gradient is too vast, then we couldn't assume adiabatic conditions unless we went to insulate the system. Now, if a shaft or a turbine is part of the system, then that's where we have to consider the work. And again, the sign convention has to be followed that work done on the system, i.e. a pump or a compressor, would add in its energy, 
and work done by the system, i.e. turning a turbine, causes it to lose part of its energy. So the pump and the compressor input their energy, so therefore the overall net energy value would be increased by the amount of energy given by the pump or the compressor. Inversely, that the system, if it was to use some of its energy, say in the, the example for steam, we would use the energy that the steam has in order to drive a turbine. Now the difference here would be the negative sign and how much energy we use, we could actually work out more important parameters in terms of power, in terms of electricity generation, because we can do that with the discrepancy within the net value of energy. Now the momentum balance, at this stage of our course, then we wouldn't necessarily consider momentum just yet, but it's worth noting at this stage. And we will look at this in the more advanced sections of the course. So if you're interested in learning more about the momentum balance, I'll put a link in the description to our mass and energy balance course and you can check that one out. Now the momentum balance becomes important when there is significant pressure loss in the system such as packed equipment or long fluid transfer lines. Now we look at the design of packed bed reactors, we look at packed bed systems, so we have uh, fluidization systems that we can perform energy balances and therefore we have to take into account the momentum of the system. Now if we look at a quick exercise, then we have 500 kilograms an hour of steam, which drives a turbine, so that's what we said a couple of slides ago, that this would be a negative value. The steam enters the turbine at 40 atmospheres and 450 degrees Celsius at a linear velocity of 60 meters per second. Now it leaves at a point 5 meters below the turbine inlet, at atmospheric pressure and a velocity of 360 meters per second. Now the turbine delivers shaft work at a rate of 70 kilowatts and the heat loss from the turbine is estimated to be 104 kilocalories per hour. And we need to calculate the specific enthalpy change associated with the process. So we have a lot of information here and we need to determine the value of delta H because delta H is our enthalpy change. So we will use this equation here. Now this is the general energy balance because we have Q minus W, W is the work, equals, this is the mass flow, this is the change in the enthalpy, so this is H to minus H1, so this is say the enthalpy in, the enthalpy out. We then have our velocity term, so we then take into account the velocity at point 2 squared minus the velocity at point 1 squared, and then we have our potential energy in here, or this is also known as the kinetic energy uh, term. So what we can then do is we need to determine the value of Q, because we know the work, we know all these values, we know Z, we know G, we need to work out h to minus h1 because that's our delta h but the first thing that we need to do is find q so we can find q by doing 104 multiplied by 4.2 multiplied by 1 over 3600 and that will get it from hours into seconds so we determine that the value of q is 0 0.121 kilojoules per second so now that we have q we can sub in all the data and we can determine the value of H2 minus H1 and that is our enthalpy change. So in doing so, we substitute in the values. Now what we need to ensure here is that we use our SI units for, because we are in the United Kingdom, so we use SI units. So we need to convert our hours into seconds, so that's why we are dividing here by 3600. Now when we substitute in these values and rearrange, we will see that it's sometimes a good idea to leave the individual terms as they are before combining them because you can see the influence that each term brings to the overall enthalpy change. So you can work out that this term here is considerably negligible compared to this term here. 
Now that means that our value h2 minus h1 is minus 566 kilojoules per kilogram. Now that would make sense because it's minus, that is work that is being done by the system to the surroundings. So that means that we are giving this turbine 566 kilojoules per kilogram worth of energy. And that's how you would go about determining the value of entropy change for a given system. Now, you could be asked to work out the value of one of the enthalpies, so it could give you the value of H1, and therefore you could work out the value of H2 and vice versa. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you understand the concept of the energy balance. Leave any comments in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video.